Today, I'm using a level two charger. This is the most common way EV owners charge at their apartments, workplaces, or homes. And in today's video, we'll explore what level two charging is and everything you need to know about it. And before we start today's video, my name is Andrew Lambrecht. I'm a project engineer here at Ever, and I've previously interned at Lucid Motors where I worked in charging validation engineering. So starting off, what does a level two charging port look like? Well, when we open up the charge port on our EV, we have two ports, one located up here and another located down there. Now, this bottom part is only used for DC charging. This is like Electrify America or EVgo. You'll only use this when you need to rapidly charge. But for level two charging, we just use the upper charge port right there. Now, if we have a Tesla product or another vehicle with an NACS port equipped, then we would add on an adapter. So we can put on this adapter like so, and now we can charge a Tesla or NACS EV. But in the future, this is gonna have to go the other way. So when most non-Tesla EVs have an NACS port on them, and you have a vehicle like this with a J1772, that's what we call this port, then we will have to use an adapter going the other way so we can charge our older non-Tesla EV. But now what does level two even mean? So first and foremost, there are three levels of EV charging. We have level one, level two, and DC fast charging. Level one is the slowest. This is basically plugging into a 120 volt home outlet and charging your EV from there. This will typically add around three to five miles depending on your EV trim every hour. So this is to be only used in a pinch when you really need a charge or if you're leaving your EV sitting for a really prolonged period. For instance, I was at an Airbnb for an entire weekend and in that circumstance, it actually made a lot of sense to use level one charging. The other is DC fast charging. This is typically up to 1,000 volts and in some cases 500 amps, so you can charge really, really fast, but we'll cover that in a separate video. As for level two charging, this uses 240 volts and in most cases it provides between 40 and 48 amps. And all of this might be a little overwhelming. Voltage, current, what does any of this mean and what does this actually mean for how long it takes for my EV to charge? Well, let's grab a whiteboard and explain. So first we have voltage and current. Voltage is the difference in electrical potential between two points in a circuit. And current is effectively the flow of electrons in a wire or circuit. So in our example of charging an EV, that would be the flow of electrons in the charging cable. Voltage provides that potential to push the current through faster. Now a good way to visualize this is with a water slide. So if we have level one charging, which is 110 to 120 volts, we have a relatively low water slide. So it's not that high up and therefore you're not gonna get a really fast charging speed. And we can imagine the current to be someone sliding down that water slide. So you're not gonna go as fast because the water slide is just not that high up. Now with level two charging, we have 220 volt to 240 volt. Now our water slide is a little bit higher. So that means you can slide down a lot faster and your current can be higher. It doesn't have to be higher, but a higher voltage allows for more current to flow through. And finally, we have DC fast charging, which is 480 volts to, in some cases, over 1,000 volts. So we can imagine our water slide will be really tall, and you can go really, really fast down that water slide. But the relationship we need to understand is that voltage pushes the current through the wire or electrical conductive surface. But now, how do we calculate charging power? And the way to do this is to multiply the voltage times the current. Now, in scientific terms, we refer to current as I, even though it's measured in amps. For instance, when you're charging an EV, you'll typically charge at around 40 amps on level two. So we would still use that I to denote current. So let's calculate our charging speed. We have 240 volts, and that is the source voltage of the outlet in which we are charging the EV from, and that outlet will typically provide around 40 amps. Now, it's important to note that these two numbers can differ, so even if you're on a 240 volt outlet, 
it may only provide 230 volts, but let's just use 240 volts to make this simple. To calculate the charging power or the charging speed, we will multiply 240 by 40 amps, and that gives us 9,600 watts. Now, that is a unit of power, but 9,600 watts is a pretty big number, so we will need to divide that to reveal 9.6 kilowatts, and that will be our charging power. And now let's find out how charging power translates to how many miles of range your car will add while it's charging. All right, so now we got the 9.6 kilowatts of power leaving the charger and going into the car. Well, there's one slight catch, and that catch is there are gonna be some parasitic efficiency losses in the charging cable when you're charging the car. So even though the charger is delivering 9.6 kilowatts of power, the car is gonna get about 90% of that in most cases, and that means the car will end up getting 8.6 kilowatts of power. So the effective energy flow is charger, charging cable. It goes to the onboard charger, so the car has a device that will basically increase the voltage to match that of the battery pack because most car battery packs are either 400 or 800 volts and obviously a 240 volt charger is less than that. So we will increase the voltage and then decrease the current to match the battery pack. And most onboard chargers can accept around 11 kilowatts of power. So if you're charging at more power than that 11 kilowatts, then you can still only accept just 11 kilowatts. But now what does 8.6 kilowatts mean? Well, this means in one hour of charging, the car will accept 8.6 kilowatt hours of energy. Now this notion can allow us to calculate the charging speed. So in this case, we have 8.6 kilowatt hours of energy. We multiply that by the efficiency of the car. Now most EVs are around 3.5 to four miles per kilowatt hour. So that's kind of like the MPG of the electric car, and that will deliver us how much range we get every hour of charging. So if we have 8.6 kilowatt hours and you multiply that by the efficiency of 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, this delivers us 30 miles of range added every hour. So we get 30 miles. So say you're charging for five hours, you get home, you plug in, you hang out, have dinner, and then you leave later in the evening you will then add 150 miles in that five hour duration. If you drive a less efficient car, maybe like an Audi e-tron or Ford F-150 Lightning, your range will be lower with the same amount of charging power just because your car requires more energy to go the same distance, just because your car will require more energy to go the same distance. Similarly, if you drive a more efficient car, maybe like a Hyundai Ioniq 6 or Tesla Model 3, getting almost five miles per kilowatt hour, then your car will add more range in the exact same time because your car is more energy efficient. Now, let's get back to the pole star. And that's that. Level two charging is a very convenient and practical way to charge your EV at home, at work, at school, or really any other circumstance where your car is gonna be sitting for a few hours at a clip. Even if you manage to make it home with 0% battery, level two charging can still charge most EVs to a completely full battery the next morning overnight. And if you drive like a normal person, maybe 30 to 40 miles a day, it can usually take just one hour to replenish all that range that you lost. Knowing how to optimize level two charging is the best way to have a stress-free experience owning an EV. Thank you for watching.